So, today we're going to study the Pythagorean theorem. And I decided to put this figure to start the class because you can see that when you square the sides of the triangle, you form three squares. Well, what the Pythagorean theorem is going to say? Well, that C squared, in other words, the area of this square that you form by squaring C is going to be equal to the sum of the areas that you create when you square side A and side B of the triangle. So that is another way to look at a theorem that you already know from middle school. In our class today, we're going to see some of the applications of this important relationship that is the backbone of trigonometry. We're going to see the Pythagorean theorem in a lot of different situations, and as a matter of fact, this year we have seen the Pythagorean theorem in action too when we studied the distance formula. Remember that, for example, think about this. If we had a half point A and point B, and I ask you, find the distance between point A and B, what do you do? You find this distance over here and you square it. You find this distance over here and you square it. And when you add them, you get the distance from A to B squared. The only thing you have to do is apply the square root of those sides. Right? So let's start with the graphs. As we always do, we start with the objectives. So, by the end of this lesson, you're going to be able to list common Pythagorean triples. We're going to see what they are, what is necessary to happen in order to have a triple. You're going to find the missing side lengths of right triangles, that is, applying the Pythagorean theorem to get a missing side. That can be the large one that we call hypotenuse, or can be any of the other two that we call the legs of the triangle. And at the end, we're going to see how to use the Pythagorean theorem to classify triangles as right obtuse and acute triangles. So let's start. Before doing anything, I would like to prove the Pythagorean theorem using a pictorial proof. This is one of the different methods that we're going to have in geometry to prove theorems, definitions, properties. So. We have right here a square that was made with four right triangles, all of them with the same side lengths, A, B, and C. If you arrange these four triangles in a way that they create this big, big square, and you calculate the area of this big square using the information here, so this area of the blue square is going to be the sum of the area of the four triangles plus the sum of the area of this square in the middle, right? So four times the area of the rectangle plus the area of the square, which is C times C. When you divide four by two, you get two AB plus C squared. Right? So this is the area of this square. Think about this now. Suppose that I rearrange the rectangles in a different part. This way. Suppose that I cut the, the, the triangles and put them here, meeting at size C. Okay? So this is C, this size A, and this one is B. And the same thing right here. Well, this is the same square that we discussed right here in the previous slide, but now we're going to calculate the area with the information we have at hand. What do we have? Well, there are four triangles again, so four times one half times a times b, and we also have one square over here with side a, and another one over here, over here with side b. So this is gonna be a times a, the area of this little square is a square, plus the area of this one, which is B squared. So, because this square is the same as this one in size, we can make this expression that we got over here equal to this one that we calculated over here. And see what happened. Well, 2AB, by the way, don't forget that, 
4 divided by 2, 2ab. So 2ab plus c squared is going to be equal to 4 divided by 2. So 2ab plus a squared plus b squared. Right? And if you subtract 2ab on both sides, what is going to remain? That c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So, that is the, the, the theorem that we're going to use today. I'm going to present to you some applications of that theorem. The way that we mentioned in the objective today. So, we have proved with the Pictorial proof the Pythagorean theorem. Right? So, let's put the theorem in action. But before getting into that, I want to uh, mention that the Pythagorean theorem uh, has the name due to the mathematician, in this case, a Greek mathematician with the name of Pythagoras, who found the relationship between the hypotenuse and the sides of a right triangle the way that we've seen so far. It's known also as the father of numbers. Important here, I highlighted on purpose the way right, because you need to remember that the Pythagorean theorem applies only to right triangles, right? Not to any triangle, only for right triangles. And here is the theorem formally defined. It says, in a right triangle, the square of the length of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the legs of, of, of the lengths of the legs. Right? What is the hypotenuse? Always that side that is opposite to the 90 degree angle. What are the legs? The other two sides. The hypotenuse is always the larger side. The legs are the shorter side. And you want to have one short leg, one long leg, or they can have the same measurement too. As a matter of fact, when they have the same measurement, that is another type of triangle, type of right triangle that we're going to study in the next lesson, which is the 45, 45, 90 degrees triangle. Okay? So, let's see what are Pythagorean triples. So, Pythagorean triples are side lengths that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem, but they must be integers. All of them three must be integers. Decimals are not allowed in Pythagorean triples. In the next slide, we have some of the most common Pythagorean triples. And it's important to keep in mind these four combinations of sides in order to save time later on in those standardized tests that you're going to do in the future. If you, if you go and see that in a triangle, the length of the sides is three, four, and five, or multiples of them, you can say immediately that the triangle is right. And for sure, that is going to help you to save time. Okay? So let's see some examples about identifying Pythagorean triples. For example, in this case, we have a right triangle with the hypotenuse being equal to x. One of the legs, the shortest one is 5, and the long size is 12. We need to find out the value of x. In this case, x is the hypotenuse. We can say that x squared, applying the Pythagorean theorem, is going to be 5 squared plus 12 squared. Right? So, x is going to be the square root of 5 squared, which is 25, plus 12 squared, which is 144. x is going to be the square root of 169 which is 13. So, this is the missing side, and in the second part of the equation, we have to determine, we identify, if they form a, Pyth a Pythagorean triple. In this case, they form the Pythagorean triple because 13 is an integer, 5 is an integer, and 12 is an integer. Okay? So you say, yes, they form A Pythagorean three. 
Okay. And with this, we're done. In the next example, we need to find out again what is the missing site. Be careful here, the missing site is not the hypotenuse. So when you set up the Pythagorean theorem, remember that we always go with the hypotenuse squared being equal to the sum of the legs squared. All right? Now, to isolate the x, we subtract 7 squared on both sides and we apply the square root. So, x is equal to the square root of 14 squared, which is 196, minus 7 squared, which is 49. So, the square root of 196 minus uh, 49 is the square root of 147, and the square root of 147 is 12.4. As I said, it's not saying anything about rounding. We leave it like that. I round it to 100. And in this case, do we have a Pythagorean triple? No. Why? Because, yes, this is integer. The other leg, the hypotenuse, is integer. One of the legs is an integer. But the third leg is a decimal. This is not a Pythagorean triple. Okay? So, this is the first objective. We are able to find out any missing side in a right triangle if we know the other two. And we can determine if they form Pythagorean triples just following this process. What is the second type of exercises of examples that you're going to see. Well, actually, this is something that I usually put after doing the example by myself to check if the students understood the content, if they can solve this problem by themselves. So this is a time for them to work and me to go around and help and see what they're doing during class time. This is, or these are two more examples in which we have over here a real life application, which is something that I always try to put in my classes because when they have to apply the theorem in a word problem, you know, the challenge is, uh, is actually higher than when the triangle is given and you just need to uh, plug in the numbers in the, in the Pythagorean theorem. So again, Two more examples in which the students do the classwork. I go around and I spend usually between five, ten minutes in these assignments. Second objective, the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Remember what the converse is. The converse is a logical statement in which we switch the conclusion of the original theorem with the hypothesis. So what was the conclusion in the theorem becomes here the hypothesis, and what was the hypothesis is now the conclusion. In other words, the converse of the Pythagorean theorem says that if the square of the length of the longest side of a triangle is equal to the sum of the square of the lengths of the two other sides, then the triangle is right. So, if the three sides of a triangle satisfy the Pythagorean theorem, you can say that the triangle is a right triangle. All right? So let's do some examples about this topic. This example, we're going to, to check if, based on the length of the sides of a triangle, if we can classify it as a right triangle. Right? So the first step is to identify what is the long side. So the longest side in this case is a square root of 113. How do I know? Well, because the square root of 100 is 10. The square root of 113 is going to be greater than that. This is the longest side, and I'm going to see if the longest side squared is equal, I'm trying to find out that, to the sum of the other two sides squared. What is the square root of 113 squared? The square cancels out the radical, and we have 113. A squared is 64. 7 squared is 49. And 64 plus 49 is 113. Right? 
So this is the right prime. Here, what is the longest side? Well, again, it's important to check. Remember that these figures are not drawn to scale. For a square root of 95, I know that it's going to be greater than 36 because 9 is supposed to be the square root of 81. And I have 95. I'm saying that because a square root of 81 is 9 times 4 is 36. So in this case, I can say that the longest side in this case is 4 square root of 95. And if I square here, I need to see if that is equal or not to 36 squared plus 15 squared. Okay? So, in the left side, what do we have? 4 to the second, which is 16, and a square root of 95 squared, which is 95. And in the right side, we have 36 to the second plus 15 squared. So, 15 squared is 225, and 36 squared I'm going to do here in my calculator. It's 1296. So when I add 1296 plus 225, this is 1521. And if I multiply 16 times 95, that's going to be 1520. Almost the same, but definitely not equal to 1521. So this is 9. A right triangle. All right? So, that is our second objective. Determine if a triangle is right or not based on the relationship between the sides. We check if they apply to the Pythagorean theorem. Another opportunity for the student to do the work and me to go around and see if these objectives have been understood. Now, when the sum of the sides squared, of the short sides squared, are not equal to the long side squared, what we can say about the relationship or the classification? Forget that. So, when the sum of the sides squared, the short sides squared, is not equal to the long sides squared, two situations can happen. It is greater, the sum is greater, or the sum is less than the long sides squared. When the sum of the two sides, the two short sides, is greater than the long sides squared, you can say that the triangle is acute. When the sum of the two short sides square is less than the long side square, you can say that the triangle is obtuse. And I have prepared for you here something that visualizes for you these relationships. So, if you follow this app, observe what happened. This is interactive. The longest side is over here in green. When you square it, the area is going to be 10.86. This is an acute triangle. Observe what happened. The sum of the blue area plus the sum of the red area is 14.88, greater than the area of the green side squared. All right? So in this case, the triangle is acute. A squared plus B squared is greater than c squared. Look what happened when I drag this down and made the angle of twos. The sum of the blue plus the red is now 7.71, which is less than the area of the green one. So this is an obtuse triangle. So wrapping up, summarizing, when the sum of the two short sides squared is less than the long side square, the triangle is obtuse. When the sum is greater, the triangle is acute. All right? So, let's do some examples to apply these uh, relationships. 
Here we have the first one. Determine whether segments with length 4.3, 5.2, and 6.1 fit form a triangle. So remember in chapter 4 when we studied triangle inequalities? And we learned that in order to have a triangle with three segments, the sum of two of them must be greater than the third one? Well, let's check that out. 4.3 plus 5.2 must be greater, we don't know, than 6.1. Is that the case? Yes, it is, because 4.3 plus 5.2 is uh, 9.5, okay, 9.5, which is greater than 6.1. So, they form a triangle. Again, it's enough to check that the small one plus the median is greater than the large one because if that works, for sure, when you add the small one and the large one, it's going to be greater than the median. And when you add the median plus the large one, even larger than the small one. So, again, you don't need to do it three times. Now, the second part of the exercise says classify the triangle. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to do 4.3 to the second plus 5.2 to the second and we're going to see if this sum is less than, equal to, or greater than the longest side squared. So, let's see what it is. 4.3 squared, 18.49. which is 45.53. What is then 6.1 squared? 6.1 squared is 36.5. 36.5 plus 5.2 plus 5.2. Okay. So the sum of the short sides squared is greater than the large side squared in this case, we can say that the triangle is acute. Okay? So, that's the way we apply the Pythagorean theorem to classify triangles according to their angles, even if we are not dealing with the angles right here. The Pythagorean theorem can help us to identify that relationship. And here, we have three more examples, same way, spending five, ten minutes. On these five examples, the students show the work, and I can see if the last objective was understood by them. Okay, so with this, I finished my lesson, and what is coming after that is like a check your understanding, that is part of the class, of the, of the classwork. So, in the first part of the lesson, I show everything I do through the examples, okay? Then they, we work together on the examples that I mentioned, on those examples, uh, part of the self-assessment. We work together, and at the end, I usually give, you, give them either a check your understanding, Okay, for them to do like an exit ticket or the mini assessment, either one. All right, so sometimes we have an extra time. The students sometimes ask for extra work in order to check if they understood completely you know, the objectives of the class. And uh, I have some extra assignments always to provide. So my students finish early, things like that. So this is pretty much my lesson. I demo lesson for the Pythagorean theorem. And of course, at the end of the lesson, I go always back to the objectives and ask the students, what is their understanding about the Pythagorean theorem triples? What they are? If they, what is their idea? If they understood how to find missing silence using the Pythagorean uh, 
theorem. And of course, the third one is they are able to classify a triangle based on the relationship between the sum of the shorter side square and the long side square. So this is an opportunity for them to ask questions, to, to, to add their ideas about what was back to them. And I have, this is another opportunity for me to have a feedback and understand and see what they understood. Okay? So this is it. Thank you for your collaboration with this.